with six hundred milligrams per minute of fat. That's all of your kidneys, both of them, uh, all of everything. So, how much goes through the afferent arterial? Well, six hundred mils per minute, right? Maybe one hundred twenty mils per minute gets filtered, give or take, and that leaves four hundred eighty mils per minute goes eventually to the paratubules. Does that make sense? So what doesn't get filtered comes out the efferent arteria. And in the paratubular capillaries, again, its job is to exchange. It exchanges O2 and CO2. It picks up solutes and water and, and does all sorts of things uh, in terms of that. And again, it's unique to the kidneys where we have arterial capillary, arterial capillary. Um, we talked about the different nephrons. Uh, we said like 80, 85% um, are short, but a few are the long ones. If you look at the ones on the right, the long ones. Um, so for that. Uh, again, just, you know, if you ever said real core muscle, his job is to filter, and that included the glomerulus and um, the uh, different uh, structures in terms of Bowman's capsule. The visceral layer, which just directs fluid into the tubules, and the, I'm trying to stay out of your guys' way, I see anything. The paratubular, can't really see anything, what's there, right? But uh, the paratubular capillaries um, get the fluid off the efferent, but the uh, Bowman's capsule directs the fluid into uh, a nice short chair. Uh, in the stuff. So uh, the real tubules again is to adjust the ultrafiltrate, right, uh, through the reabsorption secretion process. Uh, the glomerular capillary we said is called a ball yard. That's what it looks like. Uh, like we said, about 20% or so is filtered. That becomes ultrafiltrate. We we'll call it ultrafiltrate because there's no proteins or formed elements, and that's again because of the filtration slits and what they do. All right. Uh, Bowman's capsule we said it's got two layers: a parietal layer which directs the ultrafiltrate flow. It has no role except just to literally, you know, not allow the fluid to just get into the interstitial part of the kidney. And the visceral layer, which is the selective filter, that's really the big selective part. There's actually a, a, a very blown up blue uh, view of what a glomerulus looks like. Again, it's that circular structure, uh, circle around it. And uh, you can see it kind of looks all tangled up, so it's a ball of yarn. So it's a nice little view there. Uh, if you blow it up really big, that's what it looks like. So those are the photocytes, the visceral layer, kind of continuous along the capillary, right? Not just in one spot, but all the way through. At the bottom coming up is the afferent, at the top is the efferent. Um, they, they did it sort of here. I did it with more emphasis in our drawing here. But one of the things I tried to show is the afferent arterial is wider than the efferent, okay? It's got a larger diameter. What does that do in terms of resistance then? Decreases it, right? So what is that gonna do in terms of blood flow? Increases it, right? So that's good. Why would the efferent have a smaller diameter then? Well, that increases resistance. Increased resistance, we increase pressure. If I wanna filter, the higher the pressure I have, the more filtration I'm gonna have, right? And so the glomerular capillaries are kind of unique in terms of the big afferent bringing lots of blood to them. Narrower efferent makes it harder to leave, leave. That increases the pressure of the capillaries, which increases the filtration. And so the diameter relative of the afferent to the efferent, afferent is larger, wider diameter, which helps the pressure. Not surprisingly, if I want to control blood flow through the glomerulus, right, I can constrict or dilate the afferent or efferent arterial. The problem was is without knowing anything else, if both of them are arterial, so they're under what type of control? Well, they're still arterial, so the stuff we talked about before to a large extent, we'll specialize it for the kidney, but TPR control. So the myogenic mechanism and the chemical hypothesis, right? And then also hormones and sympathetic control. If I increase sympathetic stimulation, what's gonna happen to the afferent? going to constrict, right? What's going to happen to the efferent? It's going to constrict. Well, that doesn't do any good because I'm doing one which causes this and doing the other. It just, it, you know, it doesn't work very well. 
because we're, we got two opposite things. We're doing the same thing. We're kind of canceling each other out. What we find is, which we'll talk about again later a little more, is the afferent is much more sensitive than the efferent in terms of things. It has more receptors. So it gets back to that whole idea of, hey, it's the receptor that causes the action. So if we had sympathetic stimulation, we're gonna affect the afferent to a greater degree for the simple reason why. It's got more receptors, okay, uh, in terms of that. So they're very important control sites in terms of the filtration. Filtration at the glomerulus is so important, we actually call it glomerular filtration rate, the rate at which you filter. It's so important, it's a homeostatic deregulated variable. Not surprisingly, just like we did before for uh, mean, mean arterial pressure, we're gonna look at the intrinsic and extrinsic ways that our body controls glomerular filtration rate. Uh, not today, but later on. <coughs> so there's kind of how it looks. Um, there's kind of showing the filtration slits and the pores and the epithelium and the fenestrations on the right, um, and the different membranes and how ultra filter goes through. So it's not a bad little picture of what kind of goes on here. Again, these are all posted if you want to go back and look at them. Um, so in terms of the filtration membrane, we got the fenestrations with the pores, right? That makes it more permeable. We got the slit membrane that helps to, to, to filter things. We got the filtration slits that provide an actual physical barrier to the large molecules get through. And again, ultimately, it makes the glomerulus much more permeable, a hundred or in some cases even a thousand times more permeable, yet also much much more selective than a normal capillary. And so it's really well designed for its purpose. Then we kind of look at the tubules. This kind of shows the tubules by themselves. Um, so notice we have the proximal column of the tube going to loop ahead with uh, descending and ascending limb, and we've got the distal column of the tube and kind of talk about the different structures that we did there. Um, for the PCT, we said the function is primarily reabsorption. Yeah, there's some secretion that happens, but it's primarily reabsorption. Um, and again, when we absorb, reabsorb stuff, we're taking it out of the ultra filtrate and putting it back into the body, right? So we're taking things back into the body. We're holding on to it. So in general, you're gonna reabsorb the good stuff or the bad stuff? The good stuff, right? You're gonna reabsorb the good stuff. So things like ions, glucose, amino acids, and water are all things <coughs> that we do. Some of the reabsorption, as we said, is passive. Some of it is active. There's uh, mitochondria. There's also lots of microvilli. Remember, microvilli increases surface area for reabsorption. All right. So that was the TCP. The loop of Henley, we said, is primarily function is to dilute and concentrate urine. It moves solutes and water independently, so we can control each one much better. The descending limb is permeable only to water. Water moves out of the uh, descending limb into the kidney interstitial space, and that helps to you know, concentrate urine because we're moving water. The ascending limb, we said, is permeable to solute, and that helps to dilute water. So we're moving things out of water, it makes it more dilute. And at the end, when we're done fine tuning, by the time we finally get to the collecting duct, we pretty much have the urine the way we want it, hopefully. Um, and again, this kind of shows the different uh, organisms. You know, beavers, much like fish, right, live near water. So they have short loops of hemorrhage. Humans are in the middle, kangaroo rats, much, much larger. Um, this will come with two, we said, function is primarily secretion, right? Taking blood, stuff from the blood through the filter, and it's to get rid of junk we don't want. Uh, the specialized cells, we talked about the intercalated cells for hydrogen, and the principal cells was regulate water through the aquaporins and ADH. Um, so there's your collecting ducts for the over filter. Um, and this kind of shows the different things. I don't like the I don't like this one as much because it doesn't really show you the relative amount. Um, you know, like the F stands for filtration, right? That happens only at the glomerulus. The R and S stands for reabsorption and secretion, but that R at the beginning of the proximal column of the tubule should be huge. Like 90 something percent of the reabsorption for pretty much everything happens in the PCT. That should be huge, right? And the secretion should be little tiny as you just barely see because there's not much secretion there. Uh, you got reabsorption of different things in both sides of the tubule. Uh, the loop of Henley, and then the other one, the reabsorption should be pretty small and the secretion should be pretty big, relatively speaking. 
Uh, and the collecting duct, almost no reabsorption secretion happens. That's why it's not considered part of the nephron, because it lacks the physiology that the, the nephron does. Uh, so we're going to talk about it um, next time, but just kind of a reminder. Um, the amount filtered, right? So the amount of ultra filter you form, if you subtract out the stuff you reabsorb, right? Add what you secreted, that's what gets rid of stuff. And that's basically what your urine is. So next week, here's Lindsay, right? Yeah, next week we'll talk about how we form urine. Filtration, reabsorption, secretion, stuff like that. And I think we're probably good. Yeah, so we'll come back. This is physiology. We've got a few other things to talk about with microvasculature, um, but we'll get into more physiology stuff. My goal is to get done with this section by Wednesday next week and maybe start 